Well, welcome to another session of our Holly Garden Guide. My name is George Malkmus, founder of Holly Acres. And we're going to talk to you today about how to protect your crop from bugs using row covers, a barrier that stands between the plant uh, and the bug. And I think you'll find it to be an interesting session. Here we are over in one of Willie's raised beds here behind Holly Acres. And Willie, we want you to share with us a little bit about what this fabric is. Uh, uh, laying over these plants. Would you tell us a little bit about it and what its purpose is? Sure. This is a lightweight row cover fabric and I'm using it here to cover some seedlings to protect them from bugs while they start growing. Um, and these are uh, actual cucumber transplants that we can look at underneath the cover here. Simply we can just pull this up so you can take a peek at them. They're just little baby plants and these are cucumbers. Now how long can this row cover remain over the plant? Well, with cucumber plants, we like to wait um, and keep it on as long as we can to keep the bugs away until they reach a, the bloom stage. And once the, they start blooming, they require insects for pollination. So we're going to have to take the covers off and let them get access with bees. So they have limited usage, but right. it does protect the plant up until that point. Up until that point. And then we might have to resort to hand picking or some sprays, which we can talk about later. Um, but right now, I just wanted to cover a few points about the row cover fabrics. There are different weights available, and for summer use, you want to get something that's really lightweight, and that way it, the plants won't overheat inside. Then we lay it across over the plants, and we're going to cover it on the edges with soil and that ensures that even stapling will hold it down in the wind but it won't keep the bugs from crawling underneath. But it's important to keep the um, cover off the plant, isn't it? Well, it depends on the plant that you've got. If you have a plant like a tomato that you want to cover early in the season, they grow from the very tips of their, of their stem and the fabric will flutter in the wind and it'll rub on those points and it can actually stop the growth of the plant by wearing that off. When you have other plants like cucumbers or things that send up leaves but the growth point tends to crawl along on the ground, the, the leaves of the plant actually support the cover and can keep it off the plant so you don't have to worry about it affecting the growth point. So in this case, it's just because we're in some uh, warm weather and I don't want the plants to smother. I've set some old flower pots underneath just to give a little air space, but it's not absolutely essential with cucumbers. And the other thing is to remember is that if you've got a lot of wind, that fabric's going to move a lot. And you can use some simple wire hoops. You can bend a piece of rebar or PVC pipe. I mean, there's lots of different things you can do, but I just thought that the flower pots were quick and easy, and I had some laying around that I wasn't using. Yeah, this is exciting. You're pr putting a barrier between the bug and the plant. That's right. They just can't get in there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you. Um, I've already mixed up some of my BT spray here and again this is for uh, killing the uh, cabbage worms and so what I do is they've got a little this is an inexpensive sprayer you just pump it up to get some pressure in it and then you just squeeze the trigger and spray it lightly on the plants you don't want it to be running off in you know streams you just want enough to coat all the leaves get good coverage on the surface area and uh, spray each of your plants thoroughly and again, if you get some hard rains or you use overhead irrigation and you're washing the leaves of the plants off, you're going to want to come back and reapply this spray um, to make sure that you have adequate protection. And the center of the cabbage is really the most important place to get, isn't it? Because if they eat that center out, then there's no more growth. Right. And one thing people should know, too, is that the outside of the cabbage, you know, there's a little bit of damage. There's a hole there. But if I harvested this cabbage right now and I peeled off a couple of those outer leaves, there probably isn't any damage inside, and it's still very edible. Mm -hmm. It's just the outer leaves that suffer from the damage. The cabbage itself grows from the heart out, right. and the bugs aren't in there. The They're on the outside. The heart, though, that's the end of that's the That's it. That's <laughs> right. Here's an example of a spotted cucumber beetle that's on this plant, and we certainly don't want them. He's underneath. You can see, now the other variety has stripes instead of spots, but they both do the same kind of damage to our plants, mm -hmm. infecting viruses and causing the plants to wilt. So we certainly would like to try to keep those from attacking our plants. And that row cover is a great barrier until they get to the blossoming stage, but this plant, of course, is well into bloom, and because of that, it's already got female flowers and little tiny cucumbers are developing right there. Here's one that you can see developing right there. 
So this is a, a point where we have to have the covers off in order to allow pollination. But now we're going to have to figure out how can we deal with that bug. And one of the easiest ways is to squish them. Cabbage butterfly. That white butterfly that's fluttering around there right now. That's the culprit. Right, this is a common pest that we have in the spring and one thing that people may not realize is that the best time to deal with the cabbage worms is to spray the plants with Bt, Bacillus thuringiensis, when the cabbage fly, or cabbage butterfly is actually traveling around the garden laying her eggs. That's what she's doing. She's laying eggs on those cabbage plants and we want to target that when we spray our Bt. And if you look down here, you can see a plant that has some damage that the worms, this one hadn't gotten sprayed enough or as often as necessary. And you really need to keep, as long as you keep seeing those moss, you need to put out your applications probably every seven to 10 days. If you've got a hard rain, it can wash that spray off the leaves and you need to apply it again. Then we've got, you can see this plant right next door has had enough applications and it's pristine. It has no. Uh, no real significant damage from uh, any cabbage worms. Is there any concern about toxicity from Bt? No, the Bt can be sprayed. Um, it's not toxic to people and you can spray it up to the day of harvest. From what I understand, it kind of gives the, 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 the worm a, a stomach ache. That's right. Um, it's really important to spray right around the time when the eggs are being laid because it's the small caterpillars that suffer the most from the spray and the BT affects their gut, they get a belly ache, and they stop eating. And you never see them and you don't ever experience the kind of damage that we have on this cabbage head. Well, that's wonderful to have a non-toxic means of taking care of those worms. That's great, yes. Thanks for joining us once again for another episode of the Gardening Guide. Till next time, God bless you and may your garden grow well. <laughs>